Hi all, I'm Linda and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about creativity. And I first would like to start on how on defining what creativity means to me. And my definition, my personal definition of creativity is that it's the manifestation of a desire you have to express yourself. I do believe that everybody is creative because I believe it's an intrinsic part of who we are as spirit. It is an intrinsic part of our soul and that we are all born creative. Um, it's just that sometimes the definition of creativity is a little bit limited. So for example, most of us, when we think about creativity, we think of what I like to call artistic creativity, which is more, um, you know, things like painting or maybe singing or playing an instrument, writing music, writing poetry, that sort of stuff. But I do, and while I do think those are great expressions of the self and they are incredibly creative and beautiful and enjoyable, I don't believe that they are the only things that we can consider creative in our life. I think our society and even my own upbringing creativity or artistic creativity wasn't something that was encouraged or fostered, right? I think we live in an environment where, for the most part, what is most valued about a human being is either their appearance or their intellect. They're in, when I say intellect, I mean, you know, their knowledge, their thoughts, their intelligence, etc. And, um, and creativity is valued, but it's mostly usually seen as a gift that some people, an exclusive group of people have, not something that everybody has or that everybody can develop. And while I do believe that there are some people that are very gifted, particularly some artists that are born with a really great gift, I do also believe that all of us are creative, that being creative is an intrinsic part of who we are because we are a derivative of source, a fractal of source, which is the origin of all creation. So really this video is um, intended to try and reframe a little bit for people what creativity is because I do think it's a very, very important part of your development as a soul and your development as a spiritual being. For example, like I said before, I didn't grow up in an environment where um, creativity was something that was encouraged or fostered, or I should say artistic creativity wasn't something that was encouraged or fostered. I grew up in an environment where what was most prized about me was my intellect, my mind, uh, my thought process, my intelligence, etc. So even though I was very drawn to certain um, artistic, creative aspects like music and dancing, that was never something that was encouraged. It was something more that was viewed as an entertainment, right? You can pursue that as something that is entertaining or that brings you joy, but it's not something that you can pursue possibly as a career or as a way to navigate the world. And um, as I got older, you know, that sort of was um, ingrained in me as a child. And it's, it's very true in our society in general. That is usually the way most people are brought up. Um, not everybody, but most people. And, um, you know, as I grew older, I sort of adopted that as my own perspective because that's what you do. That's what I was taught, so I believe that that was my own perspective. And while I always recognize that I was somewhat creative in some areas of my life, I didn't consider myself a creative person. So for example, I always thought that I was creative uh, in when it came to problem solving, for example, I have uh, I work in technology and I have a very um, intellectual, if you will, uh, job. And my mind works in a very process-oriented way most of the time. So for me, my version of creativity was like when people said, "Oh, you can be you're very creative." I was like, "Well, no, I'm not really creative. I'm only creative." in um, from the perspective that I can find creative solutions for problems, right? Uh, or creative ways of getting something done, or I could be very resource resourceful. And while I consider those things to be a creative creative aspect of me, I also sort of always said it in quotation marks, right? I am creative because I didn't really believe that that was part of creativity. Now looking back on that, um, I can think, I, I can see how that was just a way that my creativity was trying to come through in my personality and in my day-to-day -day activities, right? So I do, um, and through the process of that, I develop a lot of set of skills. Um, or a, a lot of skills or a set of skills 
that was really helpful to me um, in the future. However, I never really uh, pursued any artistic creative endeavors because I just never considered myself to be a creative person. Um, it wasn't until I started my uh, spiritual journey, uh, which I believe was now back in 2012, a few years um, into that journey, I started having really much more of a need to express myself in a more creative way. And I always, I remember when I talked to people about it, I was always saying, well, I'm not a creative person, so, you know, I can draw, I'm not really a good singer, and I don't, you know, I can play the piano a little bit, but not too much, etc. And I really just felt like I was too old to pursue any sort of artistic creative endeavors. Um, but as I worked through my own path, I started realizing that it, it, it became more about expressing myself, and I think that's really where the value of creativity is, in that it allows you to express your unique self out to the world in a way that is really only specific to you and only unique to you. So that journey actually led me through a very convoluted path in, um, to develop some creative aspects of myself. So for example, um, uh, as I started my spiritual journey, I was really drawn to crystals because, well, you know, I'm a girl and I like shiny things, and, uh, but also because I always found crystals just very, very lovely and interesting. You'll see that I, I usually, I'm often wearing uh, crystal je jewelry, excuse me, this is jewelry that I make, this is carnelian and uh, smoky. Parts, I think. Um, but I, I really have a love for crystals and I started using crystals to enhance my healing and to enhance my own spiritual journey. And through that process, I started making bracelets and jewelry out of it because I wanted to be able to carry them with me all the time without having to have a little bag for them or having to leave them roaming around in my purse. So the easiest way to do that and this came up as a friend of mine, I gave some crystals to a friend of mine, and um, he suggested, he's like, oh, you know, this is kind of hard for me to carry, can you make it into a necklace or a bracelet? And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, so long story short, that's how I started um, creating crystal jewelry, which I still do, but, um, but that's how that process started, and that actually gave me a great outlet for my artistic creativity. Now, I have never done anything like that before. I can't draw to save my life. I've never really expressed myself artistically in any way. Um, but it was something that sort of came up very naturally as part of my own journey. I just felt drawn to express myself and felt drawn to crystals and it just seemed very practical to create them and to put them into pieces of jewelry because that way I can carry them with me very easily all the time. So that sort of happened of its own accord. It wasn't anything that I forced or really thought through. It just kind of came about as part of my journey. Um, now, I wasn't great at it at the beginning, right? I, I started, I didn't really know how to make jewelry. I figured that learning how to do bead bracelets, you know, with crystal beads would be very easy. So I started looking into that. I went on YouTube and learned a few things. And then from there, um, I started trying to imitate some other pieces that I have seen um, online. And then from there, I started developing my own designs, etc. So it was a process that took about, I don't know, maybe a little bit over a year for me to get more adept at creating jewelry. But what is interesting is that it's not something that I ever consider that I would do. Um, it's not something that I ever consider that I would have a talent for, nor something that was ever really in the realm of possibilities for me. But it just came up very naturally as a, um, again, a way to express a desire or a need that I had, but also as a practical solution for a problem that I had. So if you look at it, it was creative, uh, artistically, cre artistically 
creative, right? Because I was creating pieces of jewelry, but it was also practically creative because it was just, a, again, a practical solution to a problem. I wanted to carry my jewelry with me all the time and it was just the easiest way to do it. So that is an example of how I developed my own, uh, started tapping into my own creativity. And that's why I say that I think everybody is able to do that, right? We are all creative beings. It is a, an intrinsic part of who we are as spirit. And it is just that a lot of us, and actually I would venture to say for most of, most of us, that's not an aspect of who we are that has ever been encouraged. And the reason why I think is very important, and I've said it many times and I'll probably repeat it a couple more times, um, the reason why I think is really important is because it is a unique expression of who you are. So I want us to, I want us as a culture to really try and redefine what our idea of creativity is and to understand that it goes beyond uh, something that is beautiful or something that is um, moving, you know, emotionally moving to someone else. It really is just about our own expression of who we are and how we present that to the world. So with that, I would like to touch and give a few suggestions for those people who may be interested in pursuing or opening up that door of creativity in their lives. Um, there's a few things, suggestions that I like to make on how to go about doing them. And um, the first thing that I would suggest is um, to maybe create a list of maybe one to three, one to five things that you've always had a desire to pursue in your life. Uh, for example, if you've always wanted to learn how to dance tango or do ballroom dancing, for example, or maybe even create jewelry, or maybe you've wanted to learn how to play the piano, just make a list of one to uh, one to three or one to five, like maybe, I don't know, a handful, let's just say a handful of things that um, are considered creative, um, that you've always wanted to pursue but never had the time, the courage, the interest, the money to pursue, etc. And I would also suggest if you can, rank them in order of preference. If you don't, uh, if you, if you know a couple of them are things that you really want to do and you can't rank them uh, in order of preference, that's okay. Just make a list of a handful of things that you've always wanted to pursue. The second thing, and I'm sorry, I'm just looking at my list here to keep on track to um, of what I'm saying, but um, the second thing that I would recommend is that um, pick one of those things that is the one that either is what you think, you believe would be the easiest for you to learn and pursue, or the one that inspires you the most. So you don't, if there's one that meets both criteria, then excellent. That's the one you want to pick. But you could pick one or the other, right? If just one that is easiest for you learn, to learn. I understand that most of us don't have a lot of time in our schedules, you know, between work and, and um, home life and, um, you know, family, etc. You know, sometimes it's really hard to dedicate the time to learn something else or to pursue something else. So if you would prefer to pick something that you think would be easy to learn, then go ahead. Please go ahead and do that first. Then the second thing, um, the, or the third thing that, um, you, or the third step, I should say, is to try and learn that thing. You know, if you have the funds and the time to register, you know, to sign up for a formal class, then that's excellent, go ahead and do that. But nowadays, you know, in 2019, that's completely unnecessary. You can do a Google search or go on YouTube and find a million videos of how to do whatever it is that you're wanting to do, trust me, even the most random things. But um, that's how I learned to make jewelry, just by looking at a bunch of videos. That's how I learned to do a bunch of things in my life that I've done recently. Like I painted my bedroom a few, I don't know, maybe close to a decade ago. And I learned how to do that through, uh, with a particular pattern through YouTube and uh, what to buy and how to prepare for it, all of that stuff. So you can go on YouTube, you could do a Google search and you'll find how to do just about anything. 
So those are the first three steps that I would recommend that you try. Then the next thing that I would suggest is to um, set up a time every week. It doesn't have to be every day, but at least every week where you can go ahead and spend some time, maybe an hour or two, dedicated to that endeavor. So for example, if you are interested in painting and learning how to paint, just, you know, do the video set up like maybe two three hours on a Saturday afternoon where you're gonna focus on doing just that you're gonna watch the YouTube videos and then you're gonna go ahead and do some painting um, yourself and practice here and there and if you can squeeze in more time to do that during the week or at other times that is excellent but if you don't that's okay just set aside some time for yourself this is the time that you're setting up for you to express yourself and to learn something and to pursue a creative endeavor. So it's just time for you to really get in touch with who you are, what you like, and express that, okay? Now, that can be done in all so many ways. If you, another thing that I would suggest is a lot of people that have children, you know, don't have a lot of time to, um, don't have a lot of time to spend, you know, doing, pursuing something like painting, whatever. Well, painting, uh, things like uh, music, learning how to play the piano, learning how to sing, are great activities to include your children in, right? Uh, ideally, you'd be able to do that as your own in your own time, as your own particular product. But if you cannot, then bring your children in to it. You know, make it a fun activity for them as well as for yourself. Um, another suggestion that I would have is that. Um, you can you share this with a few people in your life now if it's more comfortable for you to keep this a secret which is was my case when i did some of this sort of pursuing some of these things um i just wasn't very comfortable um sharing it with other people but i did share it with one or two close friends because that is a way that you can uh, hold yourself accountable but also a way to encourage yourself to encourage yourself because if it is if for example in my case I shared it with a couple of good friends and every time I talk to them they're like oh how's your singing class going how's your painting class going you know um, how is this going are you enjoying it and it's actually an exciting um, you know an exciting conversation to share this new thing that you have always wanted to do and that now you're trying okay so again, you can share with whomever you want, but if you don't feel comfortable sharing it and you want to keep it secret, I still will encourage you to share it with at least one or two other people with whom you can share the experience and really just share the joy of the experience. Another thing that I want to suggest, and it's not necessarily a suggestion, but something that I want to remind people um, about is that you're not locked into this, okay? So if, say again, let's use the example of painting again. If, for example, you decide that you want to learn how to paint and you try it for a couple weeks and you end up figuring out that you really hate it, that's perfectly okay. You don't have to stick to it. If you really are not enjoying it, that's, you can cross out of the list and move on to the next thing on your list, right? Because what we're, what we need um, to remember is that what we're trying to do here is do something that is, a, a, an ex becomes a natural expression of us, but that is also something that brings us joy, that is enjoyable for us, and that it brings us joy and a sense of accomplishment. If it's not meeting that criteria, then chuck it, push it to the side, move on to the next thing, okay? And um, the last thing, the last suggestion that I have is, well, rinse and repeat, right? So if, um, you know, whether you decide that you don't like what you're pursuing uh, and want to do something else, or if you do like it and then you become better and better and better at painting, once you've accomplished that, um, you can continue that as a hobby or even make it a career if you wanted to, but then just move on to the next item on the list. Um, and, and I think that the reason why I suggest, or I don't think I know that, the reason why I suggest this, right, is because creativity, uh, it is something is, um, that changes consistently, sort of like we do, right? Um, as we go through this journey, we change. And as we change what we like, what we love, what we enjoy, 
also changes. So let's keep that in mind and continue to move um, along in our lives and our creativity will also be catching up with that. So the more that you, um, the more that you sort of engage those creative juices, right, the more adept you become at, well, being creative and expressing yourself. So you're, and as you evolve and you grow, those tastes are gonna change. So now you may be great at painting or at least, you know, good at painting, but as you're evolving, you find out that you wanna take on something like public speaking or that you wanna learn how to sing, right? So listen to that, listen to that intuition, listen to that desire and continue to follow the steps over and over to really bring yourself joy in your life. And another thing, um, this is not really a suggestion, but a tip uh, that I want to um, that I want everybody to remember is that this is not about being good at it. It is not about being perfect at it. It's about pursuing a desire or pursuing something that brings you joy and that allows you to fully express yourself and who you are, right? Because I know that some of you, probably a lot of you that are watching this video, myself included, can be perfectionists, right? And we try to do something and we're trying very hard and it has to be, you know, I want to paint, but I want to be great. You know, I want to be an excellent painter and I want this to look perfect and I want it to look a particular way. And, and this is really, it's, that's a great thing to do, but this is not what, that is not what this pursuit is about. This is really about bringing you joy, something that brings you joy and that allows you to express yourself and express your creativity out to the world, okay? Well, I hope this video was helpful. As usual, please feel free to put down in the comments any suggestions you have for exploring or developing your creativity, whether it's something that you've heard from someone else or something you've learned through your own journey. And also, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Thank you for your attention and until the next time. Namaste.